Good evening. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to tell you a true story, ladies and gentlemen, but we'll get into this at the beginning. Uh, ask this question. Anyone here ever been raided by the police? Anyone? Yes, it was quick there, was that? It was very quick there. What, can I ask what it was for? No. Right, okay, fuck it, we'll crack on. <laughs> Fair play. Well, you might relate to this. I'll tell you the true story. Right? This happened to me. It was a long time ago, uh, back in the early 90s. Now, at this time of my life, I lived in a place called Kings Langley in Hertfordshire. I lived with my girlfriend in a masonette above a beautiful old lady called Margaret. About six o'clock in the morning, we're tucked up in bed. All of a sudden, I'm startled awake. Bang, bang, bang! My front door. My first reaction was, fuck me, the postman's keen. Yeah? <laughs> I jump out of bed, go to run to the bedroom window, but before I get to the window, I hear my front door come crashing in, in off its hinges. All these boots come steaming up the stairs towards the bedroom door. All goes quiet. I look at my girlfriend. She looks back at me. I do the only thing I can do in that situation. Walk up the door, put my hand on the handle, and open the door like that. And to my surprise, there's no one there. And then all of a sudden, a bloke in complete body armor carrying a machine gun steps across in front of me like that. And I go, ooh, and shut the door, right? <laughs> what would you fucking do, right? I take two steps back, bang, doors kicked in. The bloke with a machine gun comes running in. Now, I've got my girlfriend there. I'm the bloke of the house, so I've got to protect her. I do what a bloke would do. I turn and I run, all right? <laughs> but I don't get anywhere. I'm bundled to the floor very quickly, right? And the bloke got a knee in the back, one on the knee. The guy with the machine gun's got the barrel of the machine gun in the back of my neck, and he's screaming at me. Under no circumstances attempt to look around, do you hear me? Do not attempt to look around. Do not attempt to look at my face. And I'm lying there thinking, this carpet really needs a hoover. Yeah? <laughs> My girlfriend's taken away from me so we can't communicate. I'm then hoisted up, put in handcuffs, and walk naked in handcuffs through my flat. Now, I'll be honest with you, that's not the first time that's happened, all right? <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> You've got to have a hobby, haven't you? And I'm taken into the front room, and I'm stood against the wall. Again, don't look around. Keep your eyes on that wall. Do not look around. But out of my peripheral vision, I can see coppers looking in every nook and cranny for I don't know what. Because you've got to understand, at this stage, I'm not 100% certain what this is about. I've got a bit of an idea, but I'm not 100%. <laughs> in comes the top copper, walks up to me, he goes, all right, son, you're in a bit of bother. I've got one question to ask you. Answer this honestly. Do not make this situation any worse than it already is. What have you got in your garage? Now, I'm confused, because I'm thinking, my Nissan Micra's in the garage. <laughs> This can't be about that dodgy tyre on the back left, surely. <laughs> Turns out it wasn't. Right now, time to take me out of the flat. Now, to hide my modesty, they took the handcuffs off and put me in a white forensic paper suit. I wasn't allowed to take anything from the flat. Now, uh, all the lads know this, but ladies, as a bloke, if you jump into a cold bath, your knob shrinks. Yeah? You want to try having a machine gun put in the back of your head, right? <laughs> they didn't need the paper suit. A post-it note would have done. <laughs> And then a beautiful thing happens, right? As they go to take me out of the flat, I lived in a cul-de-sac, they blocked my end off, no one was allowed within 50 yards of the flat. As they walked me out of my flat, I'm handcuffed, white paper suit, copper either side, and walking out towards a police van, I swear to God, Margaret, the little old lady from downstairs, opened her bedroom window, leant out, and she said, it's all right, Eddie, I've just called the police. <laughs> Think you're fine, they got this one covered, Margaret, if you... <laughs> We could feed the cat for the next 15 years. That would be marvellous. I was arrested, right? The second part of the story. I was arrested on suspicion of terrorism, right? It was, yeah, it was the 90s. Right? I was, it was a very political time, very different to now. It had just been the poll tax march. Anyone? Yeah. Top day out. Yeah. Criminal justice bill. Another great day out. Anti-capitalist movement. I didn't go on any of them. I was doing corporate gigs for Shell at the time. <laughs> But I was very involved in a lot of different stuff. My thing was the animal rights movement, particularly the anti-fox hunting movement. I come up on a lot of radars, that's why they come through the door. I was arrested on suspicion of planting two explosive devices in Windsor. Right, I didn't do it. But I find myself in Windsor Police Station. Right, and again, we're very lucky in this part of the world. We've got a mentality, when things get dark, our humour kicks in. I'm sitting in the cells. I was told I was looking at a minimum of 13 years in prison. So I'm contemplating this. I brought a guy into the cell opposite. And he's screaming, right? My cell door's open, the little hatch, because the bog was busted. So if I want to go to the bog, I'll just call him. This guy comes in, he's screaming. Right? I thought, I can't deal with this. So I walk up, I go, Oi, mate, in the cell opposite. This head pops up. Guy goes to me, Hello, mate, I don't recognize you. 
went, oh, did you come here often? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out he did. Right, as it goes. He explained, he was a local burglar, and he said to me, like, what has, what's happened here is, whenever a load of stuff goes missing at the weekend, right, they'll always pull me in first because they think I'm something to do with it, but I've nothing to do with it, which is why I'm shouting. I goes, well, mate, you know what? I've got a lot on my mind. Can you keep it down? And then all of a sudden he clocked it. He goes, oh, he goes, hang on. You've got one of them white forensic suits on. I went, yeah, yeah. That was all the rage in my house this morning. <laughs> he went, well, that must be serious then. And I went, yeah, it is serious, yeah, right? And I don't know why I did this. He just went, oh, do you mind me asking? I went, what? He goes, what have you done? Have you murdered someone? And I don't know why. I looked back and I went, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I fucking, fucking murdered someone, yeah. <laughs> so which he put me on it. Oh, you, what, what would you do? Did you catch someone shagging your missus? I went, no, no, I caught someone trying to burgle my house. <laughs> No more noise coming from him after that, Lucia. Um, listen, you've got some great comics coming up here. It's been a pleasure for giving me your time. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you again someday. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>